Now that we've laid the groundwork, let's actually do some calculations here. So just remembering the situation that we're dealing with, we're dealing with the interface between two media, between two waveguides, waveguide one and waveguide two. And we excite that interface with a certain eigenmode of the first medium and that certain eigenmode, let's call that eigenmode B, which consists of an electric part and a magnetic part. Um, and I'm going to put a one here to indicate that they're uh, in the first medium. So we throw one eigenmode of the first waveguide at the interface, and that will result in a reflected field, which we're going to expand into the eigenmodes of the first layer. And this would also give rise to a transmitted field, which will be expanded in the eigenmodes of the second layer. The problem we're trying to solve here is what are the expansion coefficients, both for the reflected field and for the transmitted field. Now, in order to do that, we're going to use a technique called mode matching. Now, what is mode matching? It's basically just exploiting the continuity equations of, uh, of Maxwell. So Maxwell tells us that, for example, the tangential component of the electric field will be continuous across the boundaries. And the same will be true for the tangential parts of the magnetic field H across the boundaries, at least in situations where there's no uh, current here, which is uh, what we're looking at. So what I suggest you do is pause the video and then write down that both the electric field and the magnetic field are continuous in their tangential components uh, on both sides of uh, these, uh, this interface here. Let's focus on the electric field first. So let's write down the electric field on the uh, bottom part of the interface. So that consists, of course, of our incident field. Uh, and again, we're looking at the tangential parts because they should be uh, continuous. But of course, we also have uh, another field on that uh, side of the interface consisting of the reflected field. So the reflected field will be given by a sum over eigenmodes of the first waveguide, and let's call the summation index J here. So we'll have contributions from uh, eigenmodes with index J in medium one. And again, looking at the tangential uh, component here, and that will have a certain uh, expansion coefficient. And because we're looking at reflection here, let's call this expansion coefficient R from, from reflection. And uh, okay, for each J, we will have a different expansion coefficient. Obviously, if we excite this with a different field P here, with a different eigenmode P, then we will end up with a different set of reflection coefficients. That makes sense. And in order to do that, we're going to also write down explicitly that these reflection coefficients uh, depend on P. So we have R, J, P here for our uh, expansion coefficients for the reflected field. Okay. So this is the tangential electric magnetic field uh, on this side of the interface. And this should be equal to the field uh, on the other side, tangential parts. And there we can play a similar game. We expand that over J over all of the eigenmodes in the second layer. So these are electric fields in medium two. Summing over J, looking at the tangential part. And then we have transmission coefficients this time where we sum over J and the transmission coefficients will be different if we excite this with a different mode uh, to begin with. Right, so this expresses nicely the continuity of the electric fields on both sides of the interface. And we can play a similar game for the magnetic fields. So then we have H, P, tangential in the first medium. And then it becomes a little bit uh, tricky or subtle. Now for, the, for these guys here, for the reflected fields, that's say backwards propagating field. And then when we were laying the groundwork in the exercise, we've shown that for the backward propagating field, uh, that gives you the same uh, H field, but with a minus sign. So therefore we have a minus sign over here. Um, so where H1, J, T is actually the eigenmodes in the forward direction here, but since we're working in the backward direction, tangential part here picks up a minus sign. But of course, uh, it's the same expansion coefficient eh, because we expand this in a sum of eigenmodes and the eigenmode consists both of 
electric, uh, electric part and the magnetic part. So these expansion coefficients are the same as in the equation for E. And then uh, here we have T, J, E, H, 2, J, T. So these are the equations expressing the continuity of both E and H across our uh, interface. I'm not going to bother with actually writing the, the vector sign on top of all of these fields, but bear in mind that uh, we're working with, uh, with vectors over here. Okay, so uh, we have some equations, that's good news, but we have the unknowns over here. The question is, how are we going to figure out what the unknowns are? Well, the trick we're going to play here is, well, if we call this equation here equation 1 and that equation equation 2, is we're going to take equation 1, and we're going to multiply this with the magnetic field of another uh, eigenmode of that, uh, that waveguide. So we're going to take the, the cross product here with h i in medium 1 and then integrating this thing over the entire uh, surface, over the entire cross section of our, of our waveguide here. Um, so again, i is an arbitrarily but fixed uh, other eigenmode of our layer 1. So we can do that, and that will give us a set of, uh, of equations. But we would also do the same thing or something similar for equation 2. But for equation 2, we're going to take the uh, vector product, but now on the left-hand side with an E field, uh, again, of our uh, index i here, uh, like so, and then integrating this thing out over the entire cross-section of the, uh, the interface here. So pause the video uh, and apply these uh, operations on these two formulas. And in order to help you a little bit with the notation, because otherwise it could become very heavy, we can define a certain uh, scalar product between E and certain product between E and H uh, as follows, by saying that this, by definition, means uh, the following. So we have E uh, cross H here D S. So this will simplify in terms of notation uh, these expressions over here. You might be worried a little bit in the sense that here we're talking about the full fields E and H, whereas here we're only looking at the tangential parts. Uh, but in this expression, it's only the tangential parts that play a role. So you can just replace E by ET and HT uh, because only the tangential parts here, if you take their cross products, will end up with something that is in the same direction as the ds vector and only these things will contribute. The other parts will be orthogonal and will, will vanish. So this thing only actually involves the uh, tangential components. Okay, um, enough material here, so pause the video and apply these operations on these functions. Right, let's do that. Let's focus on the first equation over here. So we have uh, as a first term in our scalar product E P1. Again, no need to worry about tangential parts here. Uh, but then we're going to take the scalar product with H I1. Okay. Um, now repeating this for the, the sum. We have the sum over J R J P. And then we have the scalar product of E J one again with H I one, and then I'm running out of space here for the final term. But the final term, on the next uh, line here, is a sum over J transmission coefficients T J P, and then what we had here was now an electric field of index J in the second medium, and then with I I. H I one, okay. Um, and remember, all of these guys in brackets here, uh, they they look very scary, but in in the end, they're just numbers, right? So these are just scalars. So we're basically having a linear relationship between all of the unknowns, between all of the unknown reflection and uh, transmission coefficients, right? So now we play a similar game with the second equation, but we multiply with EI on the left hand side. So this will give us EI1. And then we have HE1. So that's uh, that thing over there. 
and then we have the minus sign here sum over j r j p on the left hand factor we have e i one and here we have h j one and then finally for the transmitted field uh what did we have we had a sum over j of course of e j p and then as usual first guy here is e i one then we had h j two h j two okay so now we have uh these these equations over here um and again they're just linear relationships between our unknowns so this looks very promising what we're going to do is rather than having an infinite sum here approximate this and let's say we we truncate our series expansion at uh, for example n eigenmodes so if we have n eigenmodes here then we can in essence play this game uh, for n different values of i here so for each value of i that we've chosen here we have two equations if we replace this if we repeat this game for different values of i where i basically runs then from the first eigenmode to the uh, eigenmode where we truncate then in essence we end up with two n equations for two n unknowns because indeed we have two n unknowns we have n reflection coefficients and n transmission coefficients so now we've reduced that problem of finding the reflected field and the transmitted field to basically a linear algebra problem because we have two n equations and two n unknowns and in theory we can uh, we can solve this there are some tricks we can play to simplify this a little bit further but that's the subject of a next video